Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here and today I'm going to show you how I made my own old school barbell rack for my bronze era globe barbells. Many of you know that I've been collecting old school gym equipment for some time now for my physical culture museum and in particular I have a nice collection of old globe barbells from the bronze strongman era. If you look at the photos from the late 1800s and the early 1900s, there's a lot of photos of strongmen where they're, you know, posing proudly in their gyms in front of their globe barbells, uh, their kettlebells and globe dumbbells. And although some would proudly stand next to dangerously placed globe barbells uh, on the wall without a care for health and safety, others more prudently racked them on these pyramid-like barbell racks. I wanted to recreate such a look in my old school gym, so I went about creating my own barbell rack. And in you know, in all, it just cost me about 30 bucks to do so. It was super cheap. So here is the image I found online, which I based it on. And I like the trapezoidal pyramid design of it. And from what I could see, it requires a top and a bottom rectangular base, each made of four pieces of wood, of course. And to connect the bases, the top and bottom, four vertical planks of wood, two at the back, which uh, sit perpendicular to the floor at 90 degrees, and two which are slightly longer at the front and angled so that they act as the rack that catches the barbells and allows you to then, you know, to rack the barbells. These, of course, have cuts and grooves that allow you to rack the barbells in them, acting as the barbell racking part that catches the barbells. So to design the barbell rack, I created a sketch as shown with the measurements of my barbell rack design, which in total consisted of 12 pieces of wood. Eight I used for the top and bottom frame, each which consists of four pieces of wood as shown to create the trapezoidal pyramid structure. Of course, the top needs to have less breadth than the bottom. So I chose the top to have a breadth of 25 centimeters and the bottom to have a breadth of 55 centimeters, whilst the length of both frames remained the same at 60 centimeters. As mentioned, the length of 60 centimeters or 0.6 meters was chosen as this would be long enough to hold the globe barbells in place. I actually measured the globe barbells and there, you know, the length that is about 90 centimeters there. So I just basically uh, thought, you know, 60 centimeters is enough. The trapezoidal pyramid structure was then created using vertical planks of which served to hold the structure vertically which were 1.4 meter in length, had two of those, and perpendicular to the floor, these two sat at the back. And of course, the other two, which were angled, they were angled in such a way that the vertical height was then equal to the other two vertical planks that sat at the back. These angled ones, of course, sit at the front and would act as the rack that catches the barbells in place. So at the end, of course, I cut about an inch into the wood to rack the globe barbells safely for display in these planks. At the end, of course, I was very proud of the resulting globe barbell rack I created. And now, of course, I use it to display my collection of globe barbells, whilst at the feet, I place the globe dumbbells and kettlebells that I have. Of course, this design would work equally well for any kind of modern barbell, so it is not exclusive to globe barbells only. If you wish to recreate such a barbell rack, I will now detail step by step how I put it together. However, just a disclaimer, I am not a professional handyman, so I hold no responsibility for those wishing to try this at home. I am nevertheless happy with my rack and will show you other gym equipment I have created in future videos. I started off at the local hardware and asked the handyman there to cut four planks of wood each which were two by eight centimeters, which I had selected into the following dimensions. I had him cut two of 1.4 meters, two of 1.6 meters, four of 0.6 meters, two of 0.25 meters, and two of 0.55 meters. So as I mentioned, um, I got these pieces of wood already pre-treated and pre-cut at the hardware store. I've got a couple of 1.4 here, by one inch, 1.6s, so 1.6 meters by uh, an inch, so it's two and a half centimeters. 
you can see the thickness there it's about an inch about two centimeters two and a half centimeters and that I'd say is about um, eight centimeters long both of these but they differ in height 1.4 1.6 meters um, and they're going to be basically holding the two frames that go above and below and to make those small frames those uh, uh, square pieces basically or, or rectangular I should say um, I've got four of these 60 centimeter pieces which are just about the right size uh, for the barbells because the barbells will actually that the space be that is uh, the bar itself is usually above 70 centimeters so they'll hold really nicely there um, and I've got two pieces of 55 centimeters for the base at the bottom which is going to be larger and a couple of these 25 centimeter pieces if you're thinking my math is wrong the other 60 and 25 centimeter piece are just here ready so what I'm going to do is create the base very simple this is the top base and if I was to grab the other pieces together I would simply place the just get this stuff out of the way I would place the other 60 centimeter piece like so and as I grab the other 25 I drill them at the back there and then I've got my top base the bottom base is the same two 60s on each side with 55 slightly longer because that's the base right this is the top the other one's the base once those are done I put them together with these large brackets 1.4 1.6 meters long I drill a lot together and then on these brackets I'm going to create those these little um, uh, cuts that are going to create the actual racking uh, part of this barbell rack and then it's done super easy so now that I've set my wood up clamped it down I'm just going to create uh, some guiding holes here as I drill uh, to, these guiding holes allow me to drill the screws in really easily and I do them slightly smaller than the diameter of the actual screw um, then it's really easy just to drill all the screws in and I'm going to do that for this base and for so, so the top base and the bottom base here we go <laughs> You can see I've uh, screwed all pieces together and now the first top frame is done. Now I'm going to start with the second using the same procedure, a few guiding holes, screw those screws in and I should have my second frame, the bottom frame, which is the most important frame. So here's the bottom, I should say the bottom base, 60 centimeters across and 50 centimeters deep although with these two inches it pretty much becomes more than that 55 almost 60 centimeters almost a square actually as the base and now it's just a matter of placing the braces vertically and two at the back vertically and two in the front on a 60 degree angle or so and they're going to have the catches for the barbell now as you can see I've got the back frame attached to the top base and then I'm going to attach the bottom of it to the bottom base and then place the diagonal frame like so then when it stands vertical you get the idea but um, yeah halfway now and looking good
top of the barbell base, so the top base, this top frame I should say, is attached and now I'm about to attach the bottom base, this bottom frame. And once I do that, I place the brackets diagonally and cut in the catches and I'm done. finished yesterday uh, working yesterday and I'm going to just finish it off I've been putting the last two angled brackets which are going to hold the barbells just screwing those in and then I'll see you I'll show, I mean I'll show you what it looks like whoops I'm on my the rack and as you can see from the side are you showing that mate the whole thing yeah so you can see that this is vertical that was 1.4 meters and that was 1.6 meter one it's angled so now all I got to do is um, create these catches for the barbells and then you put your barbells in that's what it looks like from the side it's nice and angled and from the front it looks like so and it's going to hold the globe barbells in place that's it so let's do the catches wait a minute you can stop it mm -hmm. stop so i'm just using the square to run along the angled bracket and i'm creating some lines noah bring that here mm -hmm. come on bring it and show them here on this side you can see that and I'm measuring about three and a half centimeters in on the angle to create these marks so that then I'm going to cut them and the barbell falls in that's it yep so now I'm gonna just cut the marks I've made and once I'm done the barbell should fit in nicely and it's very easy. I'm just going to start cutting. It's very easy. You can just use a um, So call it a chisel and you take it off super easy so I'm just gonna be chipping off these uh, the um, catches basically the, the, the lines I've made with the I made some cuts with the electric saw I'm just gonna chip them off with a chisel really easy It just comes off so easily. And you do the same for all. Ah. So we've um, cut and chipped off all the, um, those bits for the, uh, for the catch, for the, for the bit that's gonna catch the, uh, on the frame here. And now I'm just gonna file this down because there's bits of wood sticking out. Just for safety reasons. Um, and it doesn't take long. Well, it's good to be safe. And just do a bit of filing. Otherwise, you're going to end up with splints on your hands. 
it as you take off the barbells. That doesn't take long at all. Alright. So, as you can see, the finished product um, its pretty awesome. Uh, there it is, my barbell rack for my globe barbells. From the side, you can see the back of it is, is uh, what I was working on the, on the first day with the top and bottom frames and then the bracket at the very front was this morning where I um, cut the the um, catches there you can see that those spaces that catch the barbell or the barbells and it's very easy it stands very well um, yeah I'm very happy with it and now you're actually seeing another part of a uh, project that I'm on at the moment and that is um, the restoration of my bronze era gym that's right I've got a small bronze era gym as you can see full of old kettlebells and very old globe barbells so here I've got my 15 kilogram barbell a 30 kilogram barbell a 35 kilogram barbell and a 50 kilogram uh, barbell they used to actually have barbells back then globe barbells that were solid with two and a half increments and you used to start working with dumbbells and then used to go up in barbells but I'll, I'll show you all this in a separate video um, point is that's how you make a um, I guess a, a, a globe barbell barbell rack pretty interesting uh, and of course this barbell rack can be used for normal barbells too I mean I'm putting my globe barbells because I want to because um, I need it to so that this is not all this stuff is not all over the floor and now it looks really cool it looks like one of those old pictures you see of those old gems from the 1900s from the 1800s where they had all their beautiful globe barbells you know stacked up like that they, that's that's exactly what I wanted to achieve and I've achieved it and it looks awesome so yeah I think in the next video I'm going to show you my bronze era gym and yeah, I think it's uh, starting to look pretty cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. So I do hope you have enjoyed watching this video on my do-it-yourself old strongman globe barbell rack. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and leave me your comments. Tell me, have you ever created your own gym equipment? I find, you know, personally, there is something very wholesome and creative about sculpting your own physique using tools you have created yourself. As I've said before, when the sculptor creates his own tools, then he is truly an artist. Anyway, that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. Now, if you're interested in learning Sandow's different bodybuilding systems, please visit my website where you will find the most comprehensive collection of ebooks on the subject. Everything from Sandow's chest expander system, which involved pulling and extension movements, to the light dumbbell system, which involved pressing, curling and flexing movements, as well as the Sandow developer, which essentially was one of the first cable stations available for the home gym. All the relevant ebooks to all these courses are available on my website www.goldenerabookworm.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platz and Larry Scott and much much more and select your poster now. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases and much much more. Once again at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. To take full advantage of my collaborations, use code GEB20 with nspnutrition.com and vincegeronda.com as well as code bookworm12 at osl.com for a discount at checkout.